Hey guys, what's up? It's Rygar the Destroyer, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Voldemort from McFarlane Toys. Now this guy is really, really cool, but before we take a closer look at him, let's go ahead and take a look at his packaging. So here it is, uh, pretty standard for what we've seen out of the Harry Potter line so far. Nice big window here on the front, and of course in the background there you can see is the removable diorama piece. And then flipping it over onto the back, you can see the other figures that were released in this line. Uh, like I said, pretty standard stuff. So let's go ahead and get back to the figure itself here. Now Voldemort stands at, let's see, exactly seven inches tall. So he's right in scale with all of your other uh, Harry Potter figures and other seven inch scale figures. And he comes with a ton of accessories. Now, the first one is already kind of on the figure and that is his um, cape or cloak thing. And as you can see, it is removable. You can pull this off which reveals underneath the robe. And of course you could take it completely off the body. I'm not gonna do that for this review. Uh, one other thing to note um, about the cloak that I really like, right here at the wrist, he's got a little piece of elastic which holds the sleeves onto the end of the arm and definitely help with posing, which I really like. Um, so definitely, I would say typically I don't like soft goods on a figure of this scale. Um, but I think they really nailed it on this one, and there's really no other option. Honestly, if they had done a plastic cloak, he would have been basically a statue. He wouldn't have been able to use any of the articulation. So I'm definitely glad McFarlane decided to go with soft goods on this one. Up next, of course, he has Nagini. Um, really cool here. It has a couple pieces of articulation. They're just swivels. One here one here and then one at the head. Um, and this is cool, it gives you just a little bit of extra you know, displayability. You can kind of get away with pulling it out flat um, to get it as if it's you know, kind of coiling around the ground, even though the uh, scales don't exactly line up that way. Uh, but it does kind of work for that and I really like uh, this accessory overall. I think it really looks nice. And then next he's got his wand. This one looks really nice, the detail very nicely done um, and a lot of paint detail on this one which really accentuates the sculpt work which I think looks nice. Then he has the uh, I guess the stands for the diorama. If you haven't seen these, uh, how these work before or you haven't seen my other reviews, you slip the diorama, the cardboard diorama in the back here and then you slip it in just like this and it holds it up behind the figure. And then final, the final accessory is the base this one, I believe, is the same as the one that comes with Harry Potter. So it's got a little bit of sculpted detail on the top there, and then pretty standard shape other than that. Now, as far as articulation on this figure goes, it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, they really knocked it out of the park. Let me go ahead and open up his cloak here so you can actually see it. Now, in the head here, he's got uh, what feels like a double ball peg, really nice range of motion in the head, and then there is a single ball peg at the base of the neck. You don't get a ton of extra range of motion from that because it's pretty stiff, uh, but it does work uh, fairly well and is very seamless, which I appreciate. And one other, one other thing uh, that I want to point out is the likeness on the face and the paint on the face looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, McFarlane, not typically known for the best uh, facial paint or sculpt work, uh, but this one, they just knocked it out of the park. Here in the shoulder, he's got a butterfly joint. It's a little tight, uh, but you can get a little bit of extra range of motion out of that once you've got it freed up. And then he's got a ball hinge on top of that, excellent range of motion. Then he's got a bicep swivel, as you can see there. Double jointed elbows, very nice range of motion as you can see. And then at the wrist here, he's got a ball hinge with a swivel in the hand and in the wrist for an excellent range of motion there. Pretty much anything that you can uh, need uh, just because of how exposed they've made the ball joint there, which is really nice. Then here in the torso, he's got what feels like a single ball peg here, and then he's got one lower down, which gives a really nice range of motion in the torso, and you know, fairly seamless overall, honestly. Um, you know, especially for a figure that's basically blank, they've done a really nice job of blending those joints in. At the hips here, he's got, like the other figures do, uh, a swivel here in the body that lets the leg come forward, and then one in the leg that lets it come out to the side, which works really well on this figure. And then hidden down inside there, 
there is a swivel which allows the leg to kind of rotate around, which is very nicely done. Then he's got double jointed knees, excellent range of motion, and then another ball hinge here at the ankle with a swivel in the calf or in the uh, shin and in the foot, which gives him an excellent range of motion. The peg is at an angle, so you can do an ankle rocker. And then finally, he's got a hinge in the toe here. So overall, this figure um, doesn't really have any of the problems that some of the other ones do with feeling fragile or having loose or really tight articulation. For the most part, everything works. The likeness is great. Comes with a ton of really cool accessories. So definitely 100% recommend this figure. It's really, really well done. And I hope, I hope that uh, McFarlane decides to continue on this line and make more figures because they are just killing it in my opinion. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And I guess I'll see you later.